Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Earth geology is primarily a tale of incremental changes over eons of time. Processes occurring over millions of years are thought to have created our planet's most wondrous geological features. However, within the Electric Universe community, Scientists and independent investigators have explored the evidence that high-energy electromagnetic events have dramatically reshaped the Earth and many other planets. The indelible mark of such an event may be found at the Grand Canyon. Standard geology tells us that the Colorado River began forming the Grand Canyon 20 million years ago. As tectonic forces raised the surrounding terrain, the river continued carving the canyon for millions of years. Proponents of the Electric Universe have proposed that the canyon is in fact a giant lightning scar, or a quote Lichtenberg figure at an enormous scale. Yet within the Electric Universe community, theoretical disagreements do exist. For nearly the past decade, professional photographer Michael Steinbacher has personally explored the geology of the American Southwest. Michael proposes his own theory for the formation of the Grand Canyon, in which electrical events still play a decisive role. Recently, Michael's theory has gained support in the research of experimentalist Billy Elberton. I came out west seven years ago trying to understand the process of the geology that I saw on my way out west that just put a hook in me. <laughs> I became obsessed. And I tried to understand it. And I actually bought into what was considered the EU explanation of the Grand Canyon that there was a mountain there first, a lightning bolt went through the mountain, excavated the canyon, a river had been flowing somewhere else, a drainage, what is today the Colorado, and it took advantage of this newly excavated canyon and decided to flow through that exit to the sea as opposed to where it had been. I assume everybody assumes it had to have been somewhere else at one point. I went looking for that, and I had a, the best of intentions, and I started seeing smaller canyons that didn't appear to be that process. They appeared as if the drainage had been there first, and then something grew around the drainage. And I kept seeing this pattern repeat itself over and over, and then one day it struck me, geez, I think the Grand Canyon might be the same. And I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't looking to stir up trouble. It just seemed like there was a consistency to rivers preventing accumulation of airborne material coming down from above and growing while the river washed away what was getting blown into it. And I started looking, 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 and lo and behold, it seemed as if the river had been there first and then something transpired to cause the canyon to grow around it. And I started studying the hydrology and, and where the Colorado River comes from. It's, it comes from Wyoming by way of the Green River. It drains a massive area. And then the Colorado goes over the Rocky Mountain National Park. Everything west of the Continental Divide flows into the Colorado. And then as you go south, everything west of the Continental Divide goes into the Gunnison. All three of these meet up around Canyonlands forming this huge drainage. It appears as if something caused the formations around the drainage to grow to varying degrees depending upon how how long they were dry. The longer something is dry, the, fa the longer it grows. So the highest points will grow the most. The lowest points will get growth towards the end of the flooding. And this area is really prone to flooding during catastrophic events. If the sun rises where it used to set, 68,000 feet of additional sea level at the equator is going to rush north and south. It's going to come up into the Colorado drainage and get trapped as if it was a bathtub, an enclosed system. There could be an east-west component to the flood, but we can look at a in this case, south to north component, where the rivers ran in reverse as described by legend. And the Colorado is right in the perfect spot to be affected by the floods like this every time. 
And then it struck me that wouldn't it be great if Billy Elverton could do experiments dropping dust from above, and he accomplished that. And then I gave him a new challenge, and I asked him to add a water element to put a, 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 a flowing stream of water while there's dust coming from above, while there's an electromagnetic event going on, and he did that. And people were watching me watch this video for the first time, and they watched my expressions, and they were, I was just blown away. It was like the greatest night of my life. And you could see a formation grow on both sides of a drainage that Billy had created. And it grew faster and faster. And there was a water element involved. It was damp where it was growing. And it was as if the dust was coming in from both sides. We'll be showing videos of this while I'm, while I'm speaking. You'll be seeing what we're talking about. There's varying, there's different versions of Billy's experiments with a water, a moving water element, while material is electromagnetically sorted, it appears, and accumulated over the drainage. And it shows that water will remove material falling from above, preventing accumulation where the river is. And then it shows that you can get accumulation in different patterns, something similar to a mountain where it trends in one direction or another. It's like welded tough type formations. But in the case of the Grand Canyon that Billy created or simulated in his garage, the layers are more horizontal. And Andreas Ote, my friend who goes out into the field with me every year, noticed that the Grand Canyon had sort of horizontal layers. They didn't trend in one direction or another severely like welded tough does or tough where there's an obvious trending direction the grand canyon has some trending this way that way a little bit here and there but it's kind of horizontal and what billy did seems as if it's more horizontal as if there's material coming in towards the drainage from both directions so that the canyon on either side would be leeward and then on the other side of the rim of the canyon would be windward. So you'd have two leeward sides for the canyon as if the material is being sucked in to that central area. So this is a completely different way of looking at the Grand Canyon. I'm not sure how many formations on Earth are of this ilk, but this is all because of the electromagnetic event that's transpiring over the Southwest US. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.